<laughs> Glory to God. God was not the one who initiated the process. The process of them having a king was not initiated by God. They were the ones who wanted a king. But God, in his loving kindness, got involved. He didn't hear that. He didn't initiate the process. But in his loving kindness, got involved to rescue them out of the predicament where they put themselves in. Because he's a loving father. Can't you see that's how God has always been? He tells man, don't do this. If you do, you will die. Man does and die. God dies and saves man. That's how he's always been. He's always been his character. So God gets involved in rescuing them out of the hand of Saul. He became the one who got the brunt of it. In 1 Samuel 16, when he was going to the house of Jesse, God said, I have found a man. 1 Samuel chapter 8, God didn't initiate it. But in 1 Samuel 16, God initiated that one. I have found a man. Saul's re request by Israel was not God. But David being planted over Israel was God. I have found a man after my heart. Samuel said, if Saul should know, he will kill me. Now, David stood up and prophesied. The Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand until I make. Now remember, David prophesied the king and the king he was prophesying about was not himself he was talking about the king of glory who is God almighty and that was the man after God's purpose and God's plan David he is a man that stuck to the promise that God made to Abraham David stuck to it that's why Jesus sits on the throne of David forever because David stuck to the promise that God made to Abraham. He said, after you, I will raise up your seed to sit on the throne. And the seed was not Solomon. The seed of David was not Solomon. Jesus is the seed of David. Now, can you see something? The seed of Abraham is not Isaac. The seed of David is not Solomon. I'm teaching good. That was why one of the names of the Messiah is Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The son of David will be the one when he gets on the throne, he will reign forever. So this is the promise here. So when Jesus uses the phrase heavenly father, you see how it came about? The father of many nations. Heavenly Father is the father in the promise God made to Abraham. I will make thee a father of many nations. That was God introducing his fatherhood over the nations of the earth using the prophet Abraham. God had to use a language of communication that man will understand. The fatherhood of God. Praise God. Your heavenly father. That means Jesus is simply telling them that that promise that God made to Abraham when he said pray after this manner our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name our father in heaven what Jesus is saying the promise that God made to Abraham is going to be fulfilled now your kingdom come your will be done on earth that promise by using heavenly father and saying thy kingdom come, it almost it also means the son is here. Thy kingdom come, the son is here. Because Jesus is the embodiment of the kingdom. Thy kingdom. So the name given to Abraham therefore represents the promise. Look at John 10, 28. Mm -mm, stay with me. John chapter 10, verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man, actually the original, neither shall any pluck them out of my hand. 
Why will you say eternal life? The word he neon zoe. Now and always. Now and always. Eternal life. Now and always. And that was a promise made to Abraham. The seed will inherit the promise forever. Eternal life. The promise made to Abraham. The promise of eternal life in Christ. That's why the word eternal life never meant when you die. Eternal. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. Get born again, my friend. <laughs> Get born again. <laughs> I want to live eternal life. <laughs> if you are not living eternal life, get born again. It is not I want to. It is what you can have now. Glory to God. How many of you have eternal life? Say, I have eternal life right now. It's not I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. Eternal. Can you see the contradiction? And people sing such songs with joy. What a contradiction. <laughs> Eternal life means a continuous existence in the earth. A continuous existence in the earth. Eternal life, when the Jews use the word eternal life, it means the life of the age to come. The life of the son of the Messiah. Eternal life means the life of that son of David who will reign forever. So Jesus said, I will give you eternal life. Look at that John 10, 29. John chapter 10 verse 29. My father which gave them me is greater than all. Oh glory to God. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands. No man eternal life no man is able to take them out of my father's son give me the amplified of john 28 john 10 28 and 29 the amplified version of john 10 28 and 29 amplified and i give them eternal life and they shall never lose it can a believer lose salvation they shall never lose it Dr. Damina, you said a believer cannot lose salvation. No, I didn't say John 10, 28. They shall never lose it. <laughs> they shall never lose it. Or perish throughout the ages to all eternity. They shall never by any means be destroyed. And no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. I, I thought somebody is hearing the sound of my voice this morning. Yes. Somebody say, I can never lose salvation. Say, even if I mistakenly keep it somewhere, <laughs> it will follow me. <laughs> Glory! I mean, if, if people are not corrupt, why are you thinking of losing? In the first place. <laughs> why, why are you thinking of losing? Corrupt minds, <laughs> twisted mentality. Why think of losing? <laughs> you should think of gaining. <laughs> Why think of losing? Can I lose salvation? Yes. <laughs> Your own you will lose. His own you never lose it. Oh, glory to God. G give me the next verse. Amplified. <laughs> My father who has given them to me is greater and mightier than all else. And no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. Glory to God. Why? I and my Father are one. 